now we shall discuss about the indian rivers and the water resources before going into the water resources let us see what are the indian rivers the entire indian river system is known as drainage system it does not mean in the flow of drainage system it is like complete flow of all the rivers is known as drainage system we have mainly divided the entire rivers into two major categories that is the himalayan rivers or the peninsular rivers the the rivers which are originating from the himalayan belt or which have their source of income of water from himalayan region is called as himalayan rivers these are also known as perennial rivers because they have the flow for the continuous flow of the year throughout the year they flow continuously when it comes to the peninsular rivers peninsular rivers may have the seasonal impact on them because in summer season and in the winter season they may be in dry conditions or the level of the water may be less when compared to the rainy season now let us discuss about the himalayan rivers where did they origin the himalayan rivers as we have the himalayas on the northern part the entire three major rivers which are in the himalayan northern part that is like indus river ganga river and the brahmaputra river are having their origins from the himalayas or almost nearby to the same places let us see the indus river origin it is starting in the kailash near tibet and it flows or enters into india near the jammu and kashmir region and then it has the five tributaries which are flowing only 80% in our country and 20% they are flowing into pakistan the five major tributaries of indus are jhelum chinab ravi bias and the satluj coming to the ganga the famous or the heartland or the major river for us for indians in the north india that is also known as indo gangetic plain river which is influencing the indo gangetic plain that is it is having its origin at two places like bagiratha and alaknanda they two join at a place called deva prayaga and form the origin of the river ganga for us and this also having its origin from the himalayan region and it has many uh, new tributaries like son kosi and all which are flowing through uttar pradesh and moving towards bihar then some parts of west bengal and it's also having its influence in the punjab region haryana region so it has major region covering here nearly 3 to 5 lakh hectares of uh, water is shedded to the crops using the ganga belt and the most important river is that is brahmaputra which is originating in tibet with the name called sangpo at a place called chimyang dang the name place is chimyang dang it is from china region because tibet is occupied and controlled by the china so it is having that name and is also near, establishing near manasarovar lake it is also starting at the same place where the indus also is starting and it flows for in the east towards the east and the south of the tibet it flows for nearly 640 kilometers and joins towards the lords uh, lords jong place where it gets connected with the arunachal pradesh region and in arunachal pradesh it is called in some place it's called siang and in some place it's called dihang and finally when the dihang comes and joins with the lohit it gets the final name brahmaputra this is the origin of the himalayan rivers we have three major himalayan rivers that is indus ganga and brahmaputra almost all are originating from the himalayas from the same place that is nearby to the manasarovar lake now moving on to the peninsular rivers we have discussed about the himalayan rivers moving to peninsular rivers we have the major rivers which are starting from the western ghats moving towards the eastern ghats and falling into the bay of bengal we have seen the condition like in the western ghats we have the western ghats are elevated and the eastern ghats are not much elevated as that of the eastern ghats we have a variation there and it is slightly tilted towards the eastern side means it has a bending shape towards the eastern side this is one of the major reason why the rivers which are starting from western ghats flow towards east and fall into the bay of bengal except the two rivers that is narmada and tapati which are in the upper part nearby to gujarat the satpura region they flow towards westwards and fall into the arabian sea now let us see here the major rivers of peninsular india are krishna godavari kaveri and the mahanadi krishna godavari attributes to be the largest rivers and when compared to them also godavari attributes to be the largest place which start its journey at triambak at nasik in maharashtra region flows towards andhra and joins towards the bay of bengal even the krishna flow starts in maharashtra flow towards andhra and joins into the bay of bengal region kaveri gets originated in the karnataka region flows towards tamil nadu borders and then falls into the uh, bay of bengal and mahanadi it starts from the orissa region and then flows towards the eastward and falls into the bay of bengal region only the two rivers like narmada and tapati flow towards westward and fall into the arabian sea to understand the mechanism of the water use we have to remember the water cycle water cycle is nothing but the inflow and the outflow of water is must to have water there water once gets out and if it does not get any inflow back then it does not have any impact on it like water is not a non renewable energy it has to be stored it has to get from the other form for us as we remember the water cycle water gets evaporated because of sun then moves into the clouds then forms into the cooling then from cloud it reaches back again to the land 
to the normal levels this is a water cycle it should be there inflow and outflow should be there and it is a continuous process if this continuous process does not happen it leads to the disaster of the water levels now let us see what is the inflow here inflow of any water content feels that precipitation precipitation may be rain fall hag dew snow anything which the water gets evaporated up and moves up then it forms into the clouds then it starts into the surface by form of a rain or it reaches the ground and then it reaches to the underground flow if these three are occurring then it is called inflow if these three are in a continuous process only we get the water level in the underground level on the surface and in the atmosphere you have the water vapor presence which is nothing but the water presence coming to the outflow outflow again has two parts evaporation and transpiration when the evaporation and transpiration together are happening it is called evotranspiration how does this happen evotranspiration happens so like evaporation from the lakes rivers and seas happens directly and when the transportation process is going on like when water is being transported in the form of rivers moving from one place to another place it gets diverted and the fertility of the water gets the quantity of water gets lessed up and then moves on to the other places because of that the water content also reaching to the levels also gets down so this is called evapor transportation like evaporation and transportation the other major issue which has to be addressed is the surface flow plus ground water what is the surface flow when the water which is flowing on the land level is called surface flow when the water is flowing on the land level like in the villages and all these places when it is flowing it appears like a streams or small small rivers when it is accompanied by a rain the flow becomes like a big river or it appears like a lake but after some days it disappears the surface flow is getting disappeared it is getting diverted the people will draw water from the lakes and rivers also in the villages which is a common scene because of that water gets dried up but when it comes to the ground waters sometimes when the surface flow is moving on the water will gets penetrates into the ground and gets into the settled into the interior places and it turns as a ground water levels the ground water level increases when the surface water is high or the rivers are flowing through it or when we have heavy rains but once the surface flow only is not provided sufficiently automatically the underground it does not get penetrated into the underground levels then automatically it leads to the less ground level of water